on today's video it's going to be pretty simple we're going to be making the temp sensor work into the square body chevy using these parts here you can get these parts at your local parts store this can come from O'Reilly's auto that's the part number tx111 and it's a temperature sensor for like a lt1 ls1 trans am this is the part number for the pigtail that you will need you can get this pigtail at advanced auto it's pta 1017 and it looks just like this and the sensor looks just like this you got to have this type of sensor they do offer these for like the 3800 series v6 cars and stuff but it's too big to go into the ls holes you know it's too big to go in the hole and you, you want to be able to fit in the hole so it'll work but you can tell the plug it goes in just like so fits perfect great replacement and now we can have a computer hooked up to it with these two wires or these two wires one of these two wires and then one goes to the temperature gauge i have to figure that out which will be easy to do we do that in this video also let's get to installing you know all great how-to videos start with a chevy just saying take a look at this Ooh. Hey, let's swap so the temperature sensor location will depend on your placement of your, you know, your heads. Because sometimes you can reverse them, but most of the time the temperature sensor is always on the driver's side, right here. Easy got to, especially on these LS swaps, but you can relocate the, you know, temperature sensor. But factory, they over here. But sometimes you will see them on the passenger side, on the back. Right there, you see that plug? I'm pointing. Ugh over that and uh that's just if you know it had a head put on this side because the heads are universal they ain't left or right the head don't care what side the engine it goes on it'll fit either side to find out the socket size we need we're going to go over here and just start fitting sockets in it so one goes over this and that one almost watch it be like a 21. what that's some bull I'm gonna have to get my impact sockets a little bit longer. Now, if you ain't got sockets, don't panic. You can use a latch on this, but I'm gonna go get my uh, extendo latchet and my extendo sockets, which don't extend, they just go with my, you see it. You know, have you ever had them moments where you might not be as smart as you thought you was? You know, basically I filled this radiator all up with fluid and coolant and everything. And the block was completely empty of fluid. The radiator was. And I filled it all up yesterday and put everything in here. And I got to change the coolant temp sensor. A smart man would have changed this before he did all that. So I'm going to try to change this fast enough and not lose no coolant. And it shouldn't need no thread lock or anything around this. Because this copper washer is what seals. That copper washer thing better days. Look at it. Yes. But that's what seals. And the sensor grounds to the engine, so dread tape sometimes can interfere with the ground. Extend our latch it. There we go. A little bit overkill, but hit a what? If you wondering what oversized socket I'm using on this today, it's 19 millimeter. And this sensor's been broke. Been broke for a while. Oh no. Oh no. My washer's hitting it. Well, the header I had to cut that come from eBay because the hole didn't line up. So I just take this bolt back out. Because that's what we can do. Out there go. Ugh. Now my oversized socket should fit in here. It does. Loosen. It's that simple, guys. Maybe I didn't fill this all the way up. I don't see it leaking yet. 
Oh, it's got thread tape around it. That's nice. Somebody put a sensor in this once before. What's my Let's see. Oh yeah, I got water in it. Got antifreeze mixed in now too, just so you know. Can't lose much at all. Guess what ain't been started yet? Cause I just poured antifreeze and water mixture 50-50 uh, down the top of the water pump. And then I filled the way it up. Let's put this on here. Tighten. Like I said, that's what the copper washes for. Got it. And don't over tighten this because you can break this plastic and you can actually tear the copper washer. Now I got to put my boat back in to where my eBay header didn't fit. Yeah, they misdrilled the hole. And, well, you get what you pay for with these cheap headers. Yeah, that's for sure. Now I need to put plug wires on this. But, all in all, it looks pretty good so far. We gotta do the injector wiring, but I'm gonna try to get this thermostat figured out so let's find the wire for the thermostat is this it this is not it this is map alternator what's this this is the temp sensor this is the actual sensor that i run from the gauge on the bulkhead this yellow wire it don't match i know but i know what it is alternator here's temp sensor right here you see how we went from a, what? I got a, I always have a tree? There's no way I have a tree. There's no way this is a tree. This has to be throttle position sensor, which it is. These is map and throttle. Up you go. Now we got a temp sensor floating around here. Some, oh, I see it. Here we go. And how we're gonna wire this is I'm gonna go see on lt1swap.com a line diagram of this 2002 harness and I'm going to make sure this gray wire goes to the same place on the computer as the color wire that's on the plug for the tree prong which it should technically so it's time to sort of this and from what I figured out I don't know if it's, there's so many different ways and different diagrams uh, but what I'm going to do as you see this clip on the factory sensor here, you can see the clip on the tree wire. I do know for a fact on every diagram I've seen, this goes to the temp gauge. So I'm going to take and just wire these up just normally because I doubt GM changed much. This wire here, which is the furthest over, to this wire here, which is the furthest over, then this gray here, and to this grayish color one with a wire. So. That's how I'm going to do it. Don't know if it's correct or not, but, you know, I got everything heat shrinked. I like to go over my heat shrink with some just regular electrical tape. Just added, you know, protection. Don't know why, but it's just a habit. So, I'm going to tape all this up and then we plug it in. I can't start it to make sure this is 100%, you know, actual working, but from what I've seen online and researched and just using a little bit of common sense that should be correct you know should be so if you're doing your own sensor like this uh do your research too but hopefully this video is helpful and you know it turns out that it's the right way to do this and i have no issues hopefully comment below if it worked for you or if this is the correct way to wire this up not only are you going to uh, help me out by, you know, confirming that this is the correct way to do this, but you're also going to help other people out by leaving that comment in the comment section below. That's watching this video trying to figure this out too. Because some of us, you know, diagrams is just hard to make sense of, and especially if you mix matching parts, you know, like this plug in. I don't know what this went to. This is gray, black, and blue, you know? I just ordered it from the pot store. So that's got another step out of the way. We got the 
thermostat wired up to the factory bulkhead now to the computer with that uh, temperature sensor flop out of a 98 fiber type transam. You seen the part number at the beginning of the video, but I will put the part numbers in the description below. So, you know, you can just copy and paste those into a search bar if you're looking to buy them online or calling about them at your local parts store. So you don't have to pause the video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, drop a like, leave a comment. If you're new, get subscribed. And if you're a subscriber, thank you for watching. See you on the next one.